Hello you guys and welcome to Abundantly Minimal. My name is Sarah and today I will be sharing an update on the 100 day low spend challenge that Jake and I have been on. As a bit of a recap, if you missed our video where we were talking about how we did this, of course I'll link that below if you're interested. We are allowing ourselves to spend $100 a week combined um, for things like food, gas, and any other miscellaneous expenses. And this goes on for 100 days, which takes us from March 1st until June 8th, which corresponds also about with our remainder of our school years where we teach. And with this, we are also allowing ourselves three splurges each for things that go over our $100 budget, but that are still items that we choose to buy or need to buy, etc. So that being said, it's been about a month at this point, at least that I'm filming this, so about the four weeks. And I wanted to talk about the process so far and kind of share what we spent money on. We have succeeded in not going over our budget and we each have used one of our splurges so far. Week one, we kept it pretty simple. We actually only purchased like three, I guess, things or we had three receipts essentially from the week. One thing that we don't ever have receipts for, but just laundry. Um, it costs us $2.50 per load of laundry. So we most weeks do one load of laundry. So that's just, it's a machine that uses quarters. So $2.50 went to laundry. Uh, I did spend $12.95 on a monthly membership for Canva. Now, usually I just use the free version for Canva, but in being in the final stages of trying to put the cookbook together, I wanted some of the plus features that it offers. So just to help me make sure I can create the best possible product for selling and make sure the cookbook looks the way I want it to, I did decide to pay the one month um, paid membership. I'll drop down to the free membership again once I kind of get this finalized here, but I did want to spend money on that. And then groceries that week, we did spend $76.43. Adding those three things together meant that we had $8.12 left after our first week. I will say, I know sometimes for different like no spend or low spend challenges, people like stock up on everything beforehand. We did not do that at all. We just kind of said, okay, we'll just start this and we'll see. So that's definitely, I think, where the low spend challenge is very realistic because, you know, does it make a difference if you're doing a no spend, but you spend a lot of money right beforehand stocking up on stuff? I'm not sure. So for us, we did not do that. So that's where some of the things we talk about, like, you know, it's kind of regular stuff that someone could have stocked up on in the past, but we didn't. We just kept uh, living our lives as normal. Week two, we started with $108.12. So the first week we did not end up needing to buy any gas, but then the second week Jake did buy gas for $28.32. So with the gas here, it definitely um, can eat up a lot of money. We are lucky I do carpool to work, so that does help us a lot because um, Jake spends about an hour and 10 minutes per day in the car to and from work, and then I spend about 50 minutes per day in the car, but I'm riding with someone else. So that's been helpful. I only have had to get gas once so far in 2018. And that was in week three of the challenge. Um, we did go to Chipotle. They were doing a buy one, get one free feature of their sofritas, which is the tofu based dish. Um, and so since they were, it was buy and get one free and we really enjoy their food, we did uh, take advantage of that. So we went there. Well, I, I went there and I picked it up for us. Uh, we also did our laundry once again, so there's $2.50. And then for groceries that week, it was much smaller amounts. We went to Aldi and we spent $16.82 at Aldi. I think they have a lot of really great priced items. And then we also went to Walmart and we spent $17.67. And I believe one of the main things we got, we don't shop at Walmart as much as we did in the past. When we were out in Western Illinois, there weren't really that many great choices for us. What we predominantly buy at Walmart these days are Lara bars, the flavors that Jake likes, because they don't sell those at Costco when we've shopped there with our roommate who has the membership. Those are the most affordable at Walmart out of the regular stores. And so we bought, I think about half that purchase or maybe $15 worth was the Lara bars there. 
we had $25 left that week, $25.82. And that meant for week three, we had $125. So we were doing a good job of not spending too much. Week three got a little bit more challenging. So in week three, uh, we still spent $250 on laundry, but then I had to get gas in my car and I was pretty much at empty, so I had to spend $37.43 with gas. So definitely right away there, a huge chunk of our budget was gone. Jake also needed gas. The good news though, this challenge, we had a gas gift card that we'd had for at least two years that we weren't really using just because um, the specific gas card was for mobile and we've never really had convenient access to any of those. But for this challenge, we figured it was worth it. So we drove out of our way to go find a mobile gas station and get $20 worth of gas for free from there uh, because of this challenge. So technically Jake did need gas, but the $20 came from a gift card. So we're not counting that for week three. We spent $51 on groceries during week three. And then we did also, I know you'll notice this is a common trend. We did actually end up uh, getting Chipotle again. Unfortunately, it was they were not doing the buy one, get one free promotion um, that day. And uh, that came to 1950, so, or 1954, my mistake. So with that, you know, should we have made that splurge? Maybe not. We ended up having $15.32 left. However, that week we did both spend one of our splurges. My first splurge for this challenge was for a gift for a bridal shower I'm going to. With that, it would have been really tough to factor that gift into our $100 for the week. Jake's cousin's fiance is having this bridal shower in mid-April, and so I used my splurge to buy a gift for that from their, um, from their registry. And then Jake splurge, he was out of his like greens powder, spirulina, like the algae, and then a bunch of different greens. I have often taken that in the morning and my pack is gone and I'm not gonna buy any more during the challenge, but it definitely, Jake feels like it helps him out a lot. Um, just feel his best. So that is unfortunately, definitely also a more expensive product. The pack he got has 30 servings, so that's good, but the pack was $44. So that was his splurge item. So, I mean, in terms of splurges, I feel like we both did a pretty good job. They were both still um, relatively, you know, important and necessary, I guess, given uh, different situations. So it, it was the choice we were willing to make. But that's why I think it's nice to have a low spend challenge where you build these in for yourself rather than a no spend where it's like, what do you do in these situations? You know, for me, it was more so kind of like with family obligation and with Jake's, it was more so health. So these are important things um, that we justified using as one of our splurge items. So that was week three. And then week four, we started the week with $115. As far as the uh, specifics, a lot of it actually was gift cards this week. We still had a couple other related gift cards. So uh, we didn't actually spend anything the first few days. And then on Friday and Saturday, we were hanging out with my family. It just started our spring break as well. So that was very exciting. So partially because I was in spring break mode and very happy about that and seeing my family, there's actually a bakery close to my school that has vegan treats like cupcakes and brownies. So I did pick up some of those for $10 and 45 cents. Uh, Jake did get gas and the gas was $30 and 56 cents. This was just on his way home from work. So the gift card we had, there wasn't a good location for him to use that. We did go to Chipotle again, cause it was the buy one, get one free day, but we did also have a gift card. Jake had received a gift card, um, for some like teacher appreciation kind of thing at school. So he got it to Chipotle because that's one of our favorite places. So since it was buy one, get one free, that was $9.61. But with the gift card that was $10, it was completely free. And then we also saw the movie Love, Simon. I saw it with my parents and sister as well as Jake. And I absolutely loved that movie. We were using some AMC gift cards for that. So we did not have to pay any money for that. And those were gifts we had received um, earlier in the year. We did two loads of laundry this week, so that brought us up to $5. And then we did uh, get some pizza from, we tried out this place called Mod Pizza, and that came to 1947. So at the point that this is being filmed, we do still have $49.84, but 
but we will be doing some grocery shopping uh, over the next few days before the money resets for the next week. So overall, kind of looking at our budget here, it's definitely been very helpful for us, especially I've noticed with grocery shopping and with some out to eats. It definitely depends. There are phases where we don't go out to eat as much, and there are definitely phases where we do um, go out to eat a little bit more, especially at, you could tell like Chipotle <laughs> uh, is a common trend. So we definitely, I would say we've done less without to eat, and also much more likely to not do like a sit down place, just because with, there you're having typically more expensive meals, plus adding in, you know, tip and whatnot. And I think I've definitely felt it more at the grocery store, making sure that I am trying to only buy the absolute essentials because you know in the past if there were certain items that we wanted to try or if there were certain items that we really enjoy but are a little bit more pricey you know I wouldn't really be thinking twice as much but definitely thinking more carefully about it now and even thinking about what products you buy where I think for us one interesting balance has been to try to figure out you know at what point you draw the line since Obviously, since this is a low spend challenge, you know, maybe the bottom line is that you're trying to just buy the cheapest possible option. But then for Jake and I too, you know, there's still like an ethical side of it, obviously the vegan side, trying to reduce waste. And so one clear example where I was really feeling this, uh, the first week actually, when we had the most expensive of our grocery orders, it came to $76. When we were shopping for peanut butter, we needed peanut butter and with that, Jake has a peanut butter sandwich most days, like during his lunch, and we definitely incorporate it through other things as well. And it was the challenge of, you know, at the store, getting the glass jar of peanut butter was $2 more than the plastic, even though the product itself was very similar. But because I do really care about not consuming as much plastic, like that really bothers me that it was plastic. And so we spent the extra money and we actually ended up, we got uh, two jars of peanut butter that day just so we had more in reserve. So we spent an extra $4 to get the peanut butter that was in a glass jar rather than the plastic jar. And so that's something where obviously, you know, that's a privilege that we have, that we can make the choice, we have the financial resources, we can do that. But it definitely, it's, it just gets complicated when you think about the different layers of the product. And, you know, also too, it, that particular one not only was it in the glass jar it was the cheapest of all the glass jar versions of it but it also I mean it was it was organic and it had um, you know no added sugar to it no hydrogenated oil so there were definitely some positives about that but it was six dollars compared to four dollars and I'm sure if we were buying peanut butter with the sugar and the hydrogenated oils at a different store I'm sure we probably could have bought it for even cheaper than that so it's definitely a challenge with a lot of layers and I think it's also just kind of something where you you do the best that you can with what you need and so far we have been able to make it work and it's definitely uh, been helpful this way by doing this first like full month of the low budget challenge we have saved about $300 compared to what we would have spent in past months without having this challenge in place. So it definitely is substantial and I will be for sure keeping you guys updated in the upcoming months as this challenge progresses. Hopefully that this video was interesting or helpful in terms of you know how we're doing so far on our low spend challenge. If you're looking for other financial related videos, you can actually check them out right here. And if you are not yet subscribed to the Abundantly Minimal channel here or part of our community, we'd love to have you as a subscriber. You can click right up there. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.